All right, welcome back to the channel. So I did a video uh, the other day about Leo Santa Cruz <laughs> getting over on Javante Davis, or at the very least, Javante Davis giving him something that he didn't have to give him. And Leonard Ellerby, the CEO of Mayweather uh, Promotions, responds to the idea that uh, they screwed up by letting uh, that fight between Javante Davis and Leo Santa Cruz be at 130 pounds. Let's talk about that in this video. All right, so the first pay-per-view fight that will take place in 2019, two, excuse me, 2020 or 2021, whenever it come, whenever boxing comes back, is most likely going to be between at 130 pounds uh, for the WBA super title between Ter uh, I was going to say Terrence Crawford between Gervonta Tank Davis and. Leo Santa Cruz. Leo Santa Cruz is a guy that I call a duck artist every video. So, yeah, give me a couple minutes. I'm going to lay into him. I cannot help it. Do not like Leo Santa Cruz. Do not like his entire career. But let's talk about it. So these guys are going to fight uh, between at for the WBA 130 pound title. It was a title that was held by Gervonta Davis until the until his last fight where he gave that belt up to move up to 135 pounds and fight for the WBA regular title against uh Yuriokis Gamboa he wins that fight in a knockout and his next fight is going to be against Leo Santa Cruz uh now Leo Santa Cruz is both the 126 pound WBA champion and the 130 pound WBA champion so if you listen to what I say carefully, you will re you will realize that Gervonta Davis is moving back down in weight to fight for the same championship he held before he moved up in weight, the WBA super title at 130 pounds. Now, the fight was originally talked about being at 135 pounds, which is lightweight, because that's where Gervonta Davis is the champion. And this fight between Leo Santa Cruz and Javante Davis has an A side to it and a B minus side to it. The A side on this one, even though I don't really like that phrase too much, but the A side of it, the big money earner, the guys, the, the man that people would actually go to the fight to see is Javante Davis. So the for, for him to give up, to, to go back down in weight to meet uh, Leo Santa Cruz, to me, is a very, very puzzling move because it is the only chance that Leo Santa Cruz has at all of winning that fight is that Javante Davis comes in weakened and drained from a training camp where, you know, he doesn't have where he has to lose so much weight that he, you know, basically doesn't really have time to train. He comes in there lethargic or comes in there weak and he's not at his full at his best. Uh, Leo Santa Cruz, on the other hand, is had moved up from 126. He's actually he's like his fourth weight class. So he was at 115, 118, 122, and 130. So yeah, I think that's his fourth weight class, right? 118, 122, 126, and 130. Maybe he was at 115, you know, for the early part of his career, but I think it started at 118. So he's a smaller guy moving up and moving up in weight and it's probably going to be at a weight that he is that he's comfortable at that's somewhere around what he walks around at so you have one guy that could be draining himself to get there and you have another guy that is feeling very comfortable well as far as that goes that's a big advantage to the guy that is being very that that is at that weight comfortably and it is a and it is something that the thing that throws me off is be is that it was something that was asked for and, advise, and Leo Santa Cruz was advised to ask for by Mikey Garcia. Mikey Garcia and Robert Garcia, when they're asked about the fight, they said, well, you know, if this is at 135 pounds, then, you know, basically Leo Santa Cruz is going to get washed. He has no chance whatsoever at 135 pounds. Can't understand why he would fight him at that. But if he can, and this is me, you know, paraphrasing what they say, said, but, but if he could... If he could convince him to go down to 130, then he might have a chance because, hey, he would be draining 
he would be draining Javante Davis. So if Javante Davis agreed to drain himself, then he might have a chance. So if I'm Leo Santa Cruz, I'm going to try to make uh, Javante Davis drain himself and come down a weight class instead of me going up another weight class, you know, to get, uh, you know, to match up with him. My initial take on it is like, why that they, they wouldn't do that? Why would they give the guy any advantage? Why would they give the guy any advantage at all? But to my surprise and my chagrin, uh, Javante Davis and Leonard Ellerby and Mayweather Promotions agreed to 130 pounds. So that so that is where the fight's going to be. Now, uh, Leonard Ellerby was asked about it and talked about it. And he said that Javante Tank Davis can make 130 pounds easy. That's not a problem. You know, I suppose he's saying that because he had made it for the fight before last. Um, so, you know, that's where it is. Uh, I don't get it. I still don't agree with it. Uh, and I don't necessarily, I don't think that's true because Javante Davis just had problems making 135 pounds and I'm not buying this stuff about, you know, I had my scale, my, I need to recalibrate my scale at home because it was off, you know, a couple ounces and that's why I was off. Hey, look, man, all I know is that, that in these fights, Javante Davis had a hard time making 135 pounds. The fight before that, he had a hard time making 130 pounds. Two fights before that, he lost his championship because he couldn't make 130 pounds. And the fight before that, he was over there in the in the UK, traveled over to the UK to fight Liam Smith and had to weigh in twice for that and barely made it butt naked, you know, butt naked on the on the on the scale, you know, with a towel in front of him. So clearly this dude, I don't know what LRB's talking about. Clearly, this dude is having a problem making weight. And to say that he's not having a par problem making that weight 130 pounds, I think is delusional because he's clearly if he wasn't having a problem with it, he would be he wouldn't have to have second weigh ins and things like that. It's just <laughs> no, nah, man, I'm not I'm not buying it. But what will I buy? So, like, I sit back and think, why? Why would you do that? And then. All right. Realization comes to me. It's what I said in the beginning of this video that you will be seeing your first pay-per-view fight of either 2020 or 2021 be with Gervonta Davis. So the only reason that I could only reason that I could see that he would do that is because they think Leo Santa Cruz is good enough of an opponent to try to help sell the pay-per-view. And Leo Santa, Leo, not that Leo Santa Cruz has ever been on, on pay-per-view before and not like Leo Santa Cruz is really any major, you know, is any major star in the sport of boxing. You know, he is a star. He's well, you know, he's a well-known fighter, but you know, there ain't any big hoopla and, and whoop de doo about Leo Santa Cruz. But what Leo Santa Cruz does have though, is something that Floyd Mayweather Jr. used to like a lot. It definitely when he was at 147 pounds. And that is, he's got a Spanish last name. And that is the Mayweather system of pay-per-view sales. Fight uh, Floyd Mayweather Jr. fights a flat-footed fighter, a flat-footed fighter uh, with a Spanish last name on May 5th and the second week of September. And that was uh, Cinco de Mayweather, right? That type of thing is what Floyd Mayweather Jr. would do. And I think that is the reason why they would even, that they would give, they would acquiesce anything whatsoever to Leo Santa Cruz. But I will tell you this, dude, I think that is something that they should be very, very careful about. I am not a big pro, I don't not, I don't have some issue, you know, I don't, I don't like Leo Santa Cruz as a fighter in his career because of all of the people he has ducked, right? He ducked Guillermo Rigondeau. He's still ducking. He's still ducking Gary Russell Jr. And uh, for him to be rewarded with this type of pay-per-view fight uh, against Gervonta Davis and even given some an, uh, a, an advantage that he doesn't even... That he that there's just no other reason to give him. Just as it just shows me, dude, it's just another run. Of, it's just a, it's just gonna. Be, it's like a borderline con job, man. But it's a con job that, man, be careful because it might go wrong. Be careful because it might go wrong. 
being underweight against a guy that is moving up in weight that is going to feel very very strong that is a very active that is a very active fighter that throws a lot of punches if you're not if Javante Davis for some reason comes in there too weak to really get Leo Santa Cruz out of there or Leo Santa Cruz just happens to show that he's got some tremendous tremendous chin or whatever Javante Davis could be in a let me stop Leo Santa Cruz is going to get killed at 130 pounds too <laughs> Uh, but still, you know, I'm like, eh, if something could go wrong, but eh, I don't know if something could go wrong. That is such a mismatch. I don't know. But it, it, it remains, though. There's no reason to give it to him. And things happen in boxing, even though I can't see it in mine, mind's eye, doesn't mean that it's not a possibility because, you know, crazier things have happened. I just think these dudes are giving it up because of the pay per view, because they want Leo Santa Cruz for pay per view. Um, and that is at this time in, in Gervonta Davis's career, that's where they want to get him. They want to get him on pay-per-view and make him a pay-per-view star and a flat footed Leo Santa Cruz at 130 or 135 pounds, they believe will help get that job done. Anyway, that's my take on the matter. I don't think that they should have done it. They should have stuck by their guns. Leo Santa Cruz probably still would have came out there and fought at 135 pounds, but it is what it is. You let me know what you think in the comment section. And with that, I'm out. Peace.